Father's House Church. Uh, my name is Dean and I'm on team here at Father's House Church in North End, Nelson Mandela Bay, as well as the online church pastor. And really is a wonderful honor for me to be able to welcome you to the 6 p.m. We're coming to you live from North End, uh, from our little studio here in the building. Um, and really is wonderful. Uh, I can hear so much activity in the auditorium behind me as church slowly gets ready to get going. The worship team is making their way onto stage and we're getting ready for the 6 p.m. PM. Welcome to church. Um, if it's your first time watching this evening, we'd love the opportunity just to be able to say hello, to say good evening, um, and say hello uh, in the comment sections. So please, if you find yourself either on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, we would love the opportunity to say hello, to say good evening this evening to you. Wherever in the world you might find yourself, we'd love to be able to say Hello on YouTube, Mornay. Um, I hope that you're doing well this evening and thank you so much. Uh, we will definitely enjoy the presence of God this evening. Thank you so much for your comments. Appreciate that very, very much. Uh, Pastor George on Facebook, hello. Uh, Deline and Jan from the beautiful city of George. Uh, Shireen, hello. Uh, coming from uh, you right here in uh, GQ, hello. I hope that you're well. Um, and then Leslie Kutsuveles. Uh, good evening, Leslie. I hope that you uh, are doing well. As I see Deline connected live, um, and anybody else who might find themselves on the garden route, I am incredibly, incredibly excited to announce that in the two weeks' time, precisely two weeks' time, on the 26th uh, of June, Pastor George and myself will be making our way, uh, and as I say that, Pastor George walks into the room. <laughs> Pastor George and myself will be making our way to the garden route um, and we will be spending a day with the community out there in George. So if you find yourself in Mossel Bay, if you find yourself in George, even as far as to be able to say hello, um, and I'm finding a little bit of a link where you can, uh, you can jump on the link and you can uh, let us know if you're going to make your way down. We'd love to, be able to, uh, love to be able to connect with you on the garden route. On the 26th of June, uh, we'll be having a pop-up church gathering uh, there'll be worship, there'll be a word, there'll be coffee. I mean, really, really just excited to be able to connect with everybody who makes their way out there. Uh, uh, Dion Barnes, all the way from Qatar, I hope that you're doing well. Um, thank you so much for your comment, Qatar. What's the weather like at the moment? Uh, I'm sure getting hotter and hotter as we make our way to the, um, our winter, your summer solstice. Um, as the, the weather slowly gets colder and colder, this side I'm sure getting hotter and hotter your side. Uh, Dorcas, good evening. Uh, I see you were late for church this morning and missed the worship, but you're right on time this evening. In the next six or so minutes, uh, we'll be making our way uh, to the uh, auditorium for some live worship uh, with Pastor Matt and Pastor Vince and the team. Really, really looking forward to that. Uh, Tamron, good, uh, good evening. Uh, Linda, good evening. And Charmaine, good evening from PE. Thank you so much for your comments. Appreciate that very much. Uh, and Jenny Roberts. Uh, good evening, Jenny. I trust that you're doing well out in East London. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your comments. And Pastor Ian, all the way out on the West Coast. Uh, and uh, Dion saying uh, 49 degrees Celsius. I actually, I actually can't believe that. That is unbelievable. Uh, 49 degrees Celsius. That is intense right now. I don't even think we broke 20 today here in, in PE. I think South Africa have, uh, has had a couple of hot spells every once in a while and uh, some, uh, a bit of a berg wind here today um, and hoping for a little bit of rain to push through. But 49 degrees Celsius, that's unbelievable. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate that. And I see that you're coming home uh, in two weeks' time. And I'm going to, uh, forgive me, assume that 
PE is home for you, uh, Dion, and um, uh, really trust that we'll have an opportunity to be able to connect with you as you'll make your way uh, back down to PE. We'd love to be able to say hello. Um, and uh, Ian out on the west coast in Free Edinburgh, uh, Tracy Porter all the way from Tarkastad. Always appreciate uh, you and your, and your comments, Tracy. Thank you so much. Um, and Deline saying, really looking forward to Father's House gathering on the 26th of June. Garden Root is ready. I love the Garden Root. It's one of my favorite places in the whole world. Uh, with um, Alzan's parents living in George, really is a, a, a family treasure, really, uh, for us to be able to come out there with the family. Uh, myself and the kids usually hit the trails up the mountain. Uh, really is such an incredibly, incredibly uh, beautiful part of our city. Um, of our country, forgive me. Um, as, um, as, a, as part of, um, as part of, uh, uh, oh, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, actually instilled by, but close enough to get to Mossel Bay. That's absolutely amazing. Goodness gracious. Um, maybe there's a small, small chance that weekend we would find each other in the same place and be able to have a little bit of a father's house um, connect. That's really, that's really amazing. From Qatar to the Garden Route, uh, have a little bit of a father's house gathering. That's amazing. Uh, Nolene, good evening, uh, and Wendy G, good evening. Um, I hope that uh, uh, you guys are having a wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, as part of uh, Father's House community, as Father's, part of Father's House Church, I uh, really would love to be able to, and I'm just going to grab a link here as we get going, uh, we really, really would love every opportunity uh, to be able to connect with you in every way that uh, we can um, on a church level and on a, on a pastoral, but on a family level. So uh, I have pasted in the comment section a link. If you have any, any prayer requests, we would love the honor to be able to pray with you wherever in the world you may find yourself. Whether it's got to do with family and friends and living situations, whether it's got to do with work and everything else in between, we would love the opportunity to be able to pray with you wherever you find yourself in the world. If you hit that link, it'll take you to what we call a online prayer form, a prayer card, uh, where if you just fill in some of those details, you can select online or you can say kind of attention Dean and I'd really love the opportunity to be able to pray with you uh, wherever in the world you might find yourself. Whether it's family things, friend things, uh, work things, school things and everything else in between, we'd love to be able to pray with you. So you can fill out that form. The second thing is one other little way that you're able to get involved uh, with Father's House Church uh, online is that if you would like to join one of our dream teams and serve as part of a dream team within the online church community, you can do that. Uh, you can jump online and be part of the, one of the moderators and jump in the comment section uh, and just reply to comments, say hello to everybody and be part of the chats. Uh, that's just one way that you can get involved. So to sign up or volunteer with one of our online dream teams, you can hit the next little form there um, and you can say join a dream team and I'd love to be able to get in contact with you uh, and create a space where you are able to get involved, get connected uh, and be part of our dream team. Would love, would love that opportunity. Uh, Luzenda de Toy, good evening. Uh, sending love to everybody here. Yeah, really, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, maybe this evening it's your first time jumping online and joining us on the 6 p.m. Maybe you're scrolling YouTube or scrolling Facebook. I uh, really would love the opportunity to just be able to say hello to you wherever in the world you might find yourself. So I'd love to encourage you to please drop a comment section. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know who you're watching with. Um, and we really would, be able, would love to be able to say hello to you uh, wherever you find yourself in the world this evening. And maybe, maybe this evening you feel the, uh, that you'd like to share this link with somebody. Uh, you never know who in your feed might require this evening's worship service, prayer service, uh, or word from Pastor George. So if you hit that little share button, whether you find yourself on YouTube or on Facebook or on Twitch, you're able to share this link uh, with a WhatsApp group, even on your timeline on Facebook. You're able to tag some friends, even if you would like. Uh, we would love the opportunity to be able to share this moment with some friends on your timeline because you just never know um, who might need this moment uh, this evening. Um, as the clock uh, slowly chases me down to six o'clock, my name is Dean and I'm on team here at Father's House Church in North End. Uh, and as the online church pastor, would really just love the opportunity uh, to welcome you to church. So thank you so much for joining us. Facebook, thank you so much for joining us. YouTube, 
Thank you so much for joining us Twitch and welcome to church. I'm slowly going to ask production to please assist me uh, as, we, as I hand over to Pastor Matt, Pastor Vince and the team for this evening's time of worship.
Father God, we, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that wherever we find ourselves this evening, in any part of the world, in any part of the country, in any part in the city, that we have the opportunity to experience your grace and your love right now. Online Church, I wonder if I can encourage you wherever you may find yourself this evening, whether you're sitting with friends or family in your lounge, whether you're on your way to a work or an event, I would love the opportunity to just take a moment to pray with you uh, and pray for you this evening. That wherever you find yourself, that you would experience God's grace and God's love overflowing right now wherever you are. That we can confidently sing and confidently say, Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Father, we thank you for your love. Jesus, we thank you for your love. In all things, in all things, we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if you're watching this evening, if you find yourself in the comment section, we'd love for you to just be able to say Amen.
coming out of that prayer. Thank you so much for joining me. I know that sometimes with the being online church, it might feel a little bit different and a little bit disconnected, but I would love the opportunity to pray with you and pray for you and trust that wherever you find yourself this evening, that God's love, um, that you experienced God's love this evening. I uh, would love just an amen or a, a pray emoji in the comment section and uh, a trust that you'll have a wonderful evening uh, further uh, with us as we go. Deline, Linda, Candice and Almarie, thank you so much. Amen, amen, amen. Amy Bennett, Ames, I hope that you're doing well. Uh, Mariette Bauer, uh, Zander the Toy, uh, Shireen, uh, Messiah, amen. Thank you so much everybody for your comments. Vanessa Thompson, thank you so much. Uh, really, really trust uh, uh, Simtandile, uh, how he loves us, how he loves us, how he loves us. Amen, amen. Mpo, uh, thank you so much for that. Krista DeFoss and Jenny Roberts, um, everybody saying amen, amen, amen. Uh, and Vuyokazi, uh, thank you so much. And Sima Tata, amen. Uh, it really is a wonderful privilege for me to be able to connect with you this evening, wherever in the world that you might um, find yourself. My name is Dean. Uh, and I'm on team here at Father's House Church in North End, Nelson Mandela Bay, uh, but also the online church pastor. And really it's a wonderful privilege and a wonderful honor for me to be able to connect with you this evening wherever in the world that you find yourself. Uh, there are a couple of things that I would love to be able to do this evening. And the first thing is, if you have any prayer requests this evening, wherever in the world you might find yourself, if you have any prayer requests, would love to be able to partner with you and pray for you. Pray for your friends, pray for your family, pray for your schooling situation, pray for work situations, whether it's a new job or to pass a test, or even just some friends and family members that you would love us to pray with you for. Uh, would love to be able to uh, connect with you wherever you find yourself. And you'll check that there is a link that I've just posted in the comment section on Facebook, YouTube, as well as Twitch. And we'd love the opportunity to just be able to pray uh, with you this evening. So you can hit that link and we'd love the opportunity to pray with you this evening regarding anything that you might find yourself going through uh, in your life. Uh, Sanet, amen. Thank you so much for that. Tejo, thank you so much. Asanda, uh, Debbie, um, amen, amen, amen. That really, really is wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and then I see Nadia uh, Labazova all the way from Ukraine sending an amen. Uh, Nadia, thank you so much for your comment. Thank you for taking a moment and, and typing a, a, in the comment section there. Appreciate that so much. Um, amen. I trust that you uh, are safe that side and everything's okay. Thank you so much for your comment. And then Gypsy uh, Chapunza, uh, good evening, saying hello to Father's House. Really, thank you so much for that. Appreciate that very, very much. Uh, the second thing that I would love the opportunity to be able to share uh, with you um, is if there is an opportunity where you would like to be able to sign up to be a volunteer here at Father's House Church, uh, you can take a moment to be able to hit the link that I have just shared with you now. Uh, and this will create an opportunity and a platform for you to be able to uh, be part of the online church community wherever in the world you might find yourself, wherever in the world you find yourself. If you've got a mobile device or a computer screen, uh, would love to be able to uh, set you up to be part of our online church community and part of our online church team uh, to be able to serve the online church community a little bit uh, better. So if you would love to be able to be part of that, would love to encourage you to please hit that link, say you'd love to join the online church dream team. Uh, I'll get a little email and we'd be able to stay in touch and connect and see if there's a way uh, that we can get you connected into the Father's House Church community family. And that would be really, really amazing if we'd be able to do that. Uh, Corin, good evening. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, thank you, Pastor George, for your comment. God is good. Absolutely, absolutely. God is good. Uh, and then the last thing uh, that I'd love to be able to share with us uh, currently in the uh, Father's House Church Auditorium here in North End, uh, we're going into a time of giving uh, where the offering is currently being received. If you check on the screen right now, and always have to check which side because left is right and right is left, uh, but on my left, I think you're right, I don't even know to be honest with you, you'll see that there is a snap scan code. So if you're watching this on a television or on a computer screen where you have access to a mobile device that can take a photo and you take a photograph of that, uh, it'll take you straight to our website or you can see the link uh, about here uh, and that'll take you straight to the website. We'll give you all the information that you need to partner with us 
as we strive to awaken the world to the gift of salvation. Now, if you find yourself watching Father's House Church online this evening for the first time, we really want to take a moment to please, uh, please relax, please take it easy. We don't want anything from you. Uh, we really want everything for you. Uh, and uh, we really, really don't want to um, make that acute platitude for no reason whatsoever, but really, really mean that. Please take it easy, relax, uh, uh, no, no pressure whatsoever. Uh, but if you consider Father's House to be part of your church, part of your family life, uh, we would uh, really love for you to please jump on that link and see if there is a way that you can partner with us as we awaken the world to the gift of salvation. From here in North End, Nelson Mandela Bay, to Cape Town, Karicha and Jeffreys Bay, and even uh, all the way to the Garden Route in George, uh, where we will be having uh, our uh, first little pop-up church service uh, for the year. And that will be happening on the 26th of June. Uh, all the way on the Garden Route in George. So if you find yourself somewhere between Mossel Bay and Nyasna, even Plett, I guess, uh, we would love the opportunity to meet with you on the 26th of June in George, uh, where we will be having a Father's House Church experience um, with myself, Pastor George, uh, and where there will be some worship, there will be a word, and of course there will be some coffee. Uh, we would love to be able to connect with you uh, wherever you find yourself if you find yourself on the garden route. So thank you so much for joining us for church this evening. It really is a wonderful privilege to be with you this evening. Uh, we're going to continue in our service this evening uh, as we go into a time of church news, um, into the last song of worship right before Pastor George. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to church. Uh, production, would you please help us with some church news. Welcome to Father's House Church Online. We trust that you'll have an incredible Sunday with us. If this is your first time tuning into Church Online, let us know in the comment section. We'd love to connect with you. One of the many ways that you can get plugged in at FH Online is by joining an online group. We love that we're able to spread the gospel through our Sunday services, but also believe in making church feel smaller by building communities through joining a group. To join a group, simply visit the Father's House website or email dean at fathershousesa.org. Here's all you need to know about what's happening in the life of the church. We're hosting a get-together for our community in the city of George on Sunday, the 26th of June. We'll be meeting at the Groenkloof restaurant at 9 a.m. for a time of worship, connection and a word of encouragement by Pastor George. Join us for our Father's Day celebration on Sunday, the 19th of June with guest speaker Pastor Ray Bevan. Keep a lookout on all our social media platforms for more information. Thank you for watching Church News. Please remember that you can make use of the link provided for giving or scan the flow code appearing on your screen. Enjoy the rest of the service. The Spirit of Jesus
Lord, thank you so much for the faith and fire of the Spirit in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you move mightily among your people when we lift you up in in worship and adoration. Your Word says you establish your throne on the praises of your people. And so, Lord, tonight we pray by your Spirit you will work mightily among us. That whether in the room or online, a miracle will take place that we'll experience the warm embrace of heaven's hand in our world, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, everybody. Thank you so very much. Uh, Would you give Matt and the team a thank you? There you go. So good to be in church with you. for the uh, 6 p.m., a real atmosphere of worship and something going on, uh, especially tonight. Hello, online church. Nice to have you connecting. I I have two pancakes here. Uh, I'm guessing one is uh, caramel. 
Hallelujah. The other is uh, cinnamon sugar. Uh, each of them are worth a 5K run. Um, but we, are, we have them available after the service. It's a little plug. Uh, it's in support of Holiday Club. Uh, and so, yeah, would you like to celebrate Holiday Club? So we're still looking for some people to serve as Holiday Club leaders. So if you're interested in giving up a couple of days on the June holidays to teach little kids Jesus and have a great time in church, uh, then sign up for that. And then also uh, preparing for our kids to come to Holiday Club. And then when we're done with Holiday Club, I think we're going to keep going with pancakes and raise uh, some financial support for our youth to go on camp sometime or... <laughs> okay, thank you, Lord. Those two years of lockdown have made people desperate for camp. It's a good thing. This morning, I did a message about something that was sort of impossible, the Bible says. It was that, and that was that it is impossible to go through life without being offended. And we had a conversation about how important it was to not let things steal your joy. Well, today, tonight, I want to talk to you about another kind of impossible thing. This one has a positive start. I mean, a positive finish, too. I want to talk to you about how it is impossible for you to be cursed. And that in your life, everything that is happening is either a blessing or it's a blessing in the making. It's the ingredients for a future blessing. I want you to recognize that even your enemies are nothing more than stirrers of the ingredients for God's supernatural blessings in your life. And we need stirrers, even if we don't love them. You should all know, hopefully, Isaiah 54, uh, verse 17. It's very popular, but a lot of people just don't know where to find it. So tonight, you'll know. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that posts against you on Instagram, wait, sorry, this correction, and every tongue which rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. This powerful passage of Scripture reminds us that we should never be concerned as believers who have given our lives to Christ whether we are cursed or not that it is actually not possible for a curse to succeed or prosper, or any weapon, emotional or spiritual, intended to pull you down. Instead, actually, our lives are simply blessings in the making. If I told you certain characteristics, like, for instance, that maybe I can't sleep uh, early. When I go to bed, I just lie awake for hours. I get a couple of hours of sleep, then wake up, uh, the next morning early, my heart races sometimes. I've lost my appetite. One person might say, you're coming down with something. Another person might say, you're in love. There are similar ingredients, but the conditions matter. To one person, it's the telltale signs of the flu. To another person, Something new has sparked in their lives. They've lost their appetite because they were so excited to be in the company of somebody new. Or they lie awake at night because they're doing that, you hang up, no, you hang up, no, you hang up thing. People don't do that anymore. They text now. Nobody actually, it's texting. Good night, good night, okay, good night. Bye, see you in the morning. Okay, can't wait. The morning's so far away, can't wait. Blue tick, blue tick, blue tick, heart emoji, heart emoji, sleeping emoji. To one person, you've got an illness. To another person, you're in a joyous season of your life. You wake up the next morning to see who will be up first, only to type good morning, as though your conversation continued through the night. Our perspective as believers should be similar in a way. No matter what's happening, it's God's way of turning it into a blessing. He works all things together for the good to them that love Him and are called according to His purpose. 
In fact, the Apostle Paul even said, the things that were intended to, for my harm, God has turned around for my blessing. He could even say that of himself being thrown in jail. He said, I know what they meant. They meant to hold me down. But while I'm here, I'm going to start writing. Did you know that? They threw Paul in jail so that the gospel would slow down. They were tired of all the preaching he was doing. So they thought, from jail, what's he going to do? We stick him in there with one or two thieves, no Wi-Fi, what will happen? Well, Paul thought, I'm here, I've got time, I'll write. And so he wrote a number of books you might be familiar with. He wrote books like Romans and 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians and Ephesians and Colossians and First and Second Thessalonians. And the longer they jailed him, the further the gospel went. And they thought, well, if we could keep him quiet, but now suddenly he's writing and it's being read in three or four or five towns, cities, countries, generations, all at the same time. You see, what was intended for your harm, God has a way of turning it around for your good. You've got to start to recognize and read everything in your life from the perspective that it's just an ingredient. Now, I don't love the ingredients. I love the results. I love this, the pan, these pancakes. They are great. I can't wait for the end of the service so that I can pray over them and cast the calories out. <clears throat> I don't think that works. But I've no, at no stage in my life opened my cupboard and said, I just love flour. The ingredient is irrelevant. You know, it just doesn't evoke any emotion in me. The product, though, does. You've got to start looking at your life as everything being an ingredient for something. And then to start to evaluate whether the ingredient is quality or not. You need to recognize that even the things done to you are just ingredients in something God is preparing. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> a little bit of that flu still there making me sound like a man. <clears throat> Wish I could keep that sound. One of the most powerful examples of this is actually a story in the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 32. It's the story of a man who wrestled with God. Some of you know the story. Jacob, who had a lot of issues in his life, eventually confronts himself through a wrestling match in Genesis with God. And the Bible literally says that Jacob said, don't leave until you bless me. I want to re you to recognize that wrestling is just blessing in the making. At the moment, you're wrestling with your finances and they don't add up. But it's just a way of building the ingredients you need to live in financial blessing. Right now, you're figuring out relationship and identity, who you are and who you want to be with and where you want to go, and you're stressing about it. You're lying awake at night thinking, will there ever be someone for me, or will I ever get rid of this someone next to me? <laughs> Wait, actually, you shouldn't be thinking that. <laughs> if you are, stop it. Repent here today. Whatever that stress is right now, you think it's the most crucial thing. There are no good ones left, no good jobs left. It's not just relationships, no good houses left. People say this kind of stuff all the time. All the good property has been bought. All the good people are out and married with kids. All the good this, all the good. That is not true. Your stress today is nothing but wrestling God's blessing into your life for tomorrow. I wish I had told myself to take it easy a little sooner in life as far as my anxiety and stress on how things will work out. I'm not responsible for how they work out. I'm responsible for responding to God in an honorable way, and He will make things work out. I have desperately wanted things that weren't meant for me because they simply were too small for the plan that God had in mind. Given a choice, I would have picked the now and smaller, but God had a better plan for the later but bigger. And every now and then you have to allow yourself to realize it feels like a fight, but it's only because I'm fighting to receive my blessing. Don't misunderstand it and think that that means you're cursed in some kind of way. You're absolutely not. These 
light and momentary troubles, the Bible says, are working for us a far greater glory. Stick to it. Persevere. Don't be discouraged by the idea that it's all a bit of a fight. Right now, I know some of you feel like every day is a fight. Like getting out of bed is, yeah, it's a fight. That those days you have when you want to have cornflakes and there's no milk and you went for it with water. No, I know, I know. And you thought you could dilute the negative consequence with sugar. And now what you've got is a porridge not designed for human consumption. Maybe you've had those days, and I've seen a few of them on RG people oversharing their, uh, are you okay? There was uh, some kind of an anointing happened there. Uh, People desperately wanting to show people their food, they prepare a great plate, but in holding it up to the camera, it slips off and lands on the floor. And that how that sometimes, like our flexing is so big that we're still hungry. Maybe it's a fight. Maybe you've been trying to make your way through a subject at university and you're in round two and maybe it's round three and you think the devil has possessed your lecturer (laughs) and that's why the class average is the lowest class average. Listen, I've been around a long time. Do you know how many times I've heard the class average in this subject is the lowest class average in the history of all class averages ever? Not only have I heard it, I have heard those words coming out of my own mouth 20 years ago. I told my parents once that the economics lecturer was such a bad lecturer that the class average was like 36 and I was getting 38. I was above average. (laughs) Even while I'm failing, I'm above average. They told me, write letters of complaint. We wrote and wrote. Even still, that lecture is still there, I'm sure. No, I'm joking. There's there's a prof here tonight, so I hope he does not relay that message to anyone. I I, I know it seems like such a struggle. Maybe your struggle is with your self-identity. You can't look at yourself in the mirror and just smile. You look at yourself in the mirror and think, I've got to do something with that hair. I've got to buy a new one. I've got to do something. Let me just explain something to white people. You don't, <laughs> let me just explain something to white people. You don't understand how big the wrestling for blessing is in the hair game space. You have, you have no idea. Hair is an economic investment of the level of a car in some, uh, I'm just explaining something to you. Uh, that I only uh, rediscovered a few years ago. Uh, You just comb it this way, or the next day you comb it that way. For some people to do that, it is a five-hour, six-hour at a hair salon to change direction. So, okay, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. It's enough now. It's enough, okay. Or maybe... Your sense of identity, no matter what you do, you, can't just, you just can't feel comfortable. You're wrestling. But I want to encourage you that you're wrestling down your blessing. It's intended to be that way. It's Jacob fighting. It's Paul in prison. It's Joseph coming out of a pit. It's Christ on a cross in the hopes and expectation of resurrection. Don't give up. In the dark moments, they don't last forever. Uh, Sorrow lasts for a moment, but joy comes in the morning. (laughs) Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every blessing in heavenly places in Christ. There's a real power in recognizing it's a, a blessing, a guarantee to everyone. You don't have to worry about whether you're not quite living right to be blessed. Let me tell you why. If you don't live right to be blessed, you're simply adding another ingredient to the wrestling you're going to need to do until you get to your blessing. Nobody gets to escape the reality of building a blessed life. 
It doesn't just happen. You build it. You build it through internal wrestling. You know, Matthew chapter 5 has this great list that's called the Beatitudes. It's a list of a sermon Jesus made, preached on a mountain. And on it, he starts out with all these blessings. I want you to, in light of everything I've said to you tonight, think about the ingredient that's necessary for the blessing. It might surprise you that some of those ingredients are negative, but the blessing, the outcome is positive. Look at what it says. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated with his disciples, it came to him, and he said to them, he opened uh, his mouth and taught them, saying, blessed are ingredient, poor in spirit, inheritance, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can you see how a broken ingredient can become a blessed outcome? He keeps going. Blessed are those who mourn a broken ingredient, for they shall be comforted, the presence of God. Blessed are the meek, those who feel intimidated or timid, for they shall one day inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It means you have a deficiency. You wish for something that's not there now, but there's coming a day you will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know what this passage reminds us of is there's a period of time when your blessing is still being made that things don't look great. You take a righteous stand and somebody won't be your friend. Somebody won't walk with you or do business with you because you've taken a position. You make a statement for Christ and somebody unfollows you, blocks you or deletes you. For now, you're going through that season. But there's going to come a day when people will like you, follow you, invite you, partner with you because you are righteous and you've made a righteous plan. You're building the reliability of a blessing in your life that will be necessary for an incredible miracle in the future of your life. Those who can't see it now, they're lost because God has a plan for a future that you're busy constructing right now. There's something really powerful about realizing I'm poor for a season, but I'm just building my blessing for the future. I'm a little intimidated now, but it's just for a season. I'm not comfortable now, but it's just for a season. I have a broken heart, but it's just for a season. God is building something in my life for a supernatural favor and blessing in the future. You've got to get your head around this to realize that everything is either a blessing or a blessing in the making. Everything. Nothing is a curse that can be fruitful or productive over your life. It's impossible for any weapon to come up against you that Christ hasn't already dealt with on the cross. It's impossible. There isn't, a, there isn't a new strategy the enemy's going to come with. There isn't a new weakness you're going to invent. There isn't a new human condition. I want to do a series soon titled Only Human. And to prove that being only human is not a curse. God made you that way. He made you to feel. He made you to get passionate. He made you to feel weakness, but also to feel bravery. God wanted that in us. Because when you put all those ingredients together, it turns you into something incredibly unique. A being that can choose to love God from the heart. There is no other created thing on all the earth that can choose to love or worship God from the heart. I mean, the animals declare the goodness of God, but not from the heart. Nature magnifies God's glory, but not from the heart. It's not a choice. No plant ever got up one morning and said, I wonder if I will open my flowers and shine for the sun. Can't make that choice. It's built in. But for each of us, The human condition is the privilege of being able to choose to follow God. 
That's the human condition. It's a joy, not a curse. I want to encourage you to be edified by the idea that everything's just in some stage of completion. It's not done yet. So don't be too discouraged. It might just be flour in the cupboard. But in a little while, it'll be a, be a good pancake. They're available after the service. <laughs> Yo, man, I can't keep looking at it. That was wrong. I just, all I want to do is squeeze a little bit of lemon. Just, did you know? Did you know that? That's a thing. Take five home. And they just put a little bit of lemon <laughs> on the cinnamon sugar. On the cinnamon, a little bit of lemon. Next level. Next level. I learned that from Afrikaans people, and they know how to do that kind of thing properly. Amen. I want to give you three simple ideas on how you can switch your mindset from it's a problem or a fight or a wrestle to just a wrestling in the making. It's not a problem. It's a possibility. It's not the end. It's just an ingredient towards it. Now, three things I just want to leave with you on that. The first is, you know you're shifting into blessing mindset if you can start seeing that God is at work, if you can see it. Matthew 13 says, but blessed are you, are your eyes, for they see your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you, the prophets, many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. If you could see God is already at work, you'll turn your attitude around from thinking nothing's going well and start to see that behind the scenes, the mystery of the master is at work. You may not know it now, but God's preventing you from being in the wrong relationship, preventing you from falling into the trap of unrighteous or unethical people. Right now, you might feel, oh, I really wanted to be in that crew. But God said, I don't want you to be in someone else's entourage. I want you to head your own. Yeah. Quit following. That's a very American word. Stop following people when God called you to lead them. If you can see he's at work. Sometimes I'll admit, I'm short-sighted. In fact, there's a passage of Scripture in 1 Peter that says, if you don't keep adding to your faith, you become nearsighted and quickly forget what the Lord has done. Sometimes I forget what the Lord has done. I forget that just a few short years ago before the pandemic, God had taken our venue and filled it with people ready to hear the gospel. And you know what that fills me with an awareness of? He who did it then is busy preparing to do it again. The miracle is just in the making. He's putting some raw ingredients together and compiling something. At some point, people will say, taste and see that the Lord is good. When did he make that? Well, he was making it all the while. You just got to look around and say, God is at work. Some people are so incredibly blind. Have you ever met somebody who just doesn't see it? They can't see that somebody likes them or that somebody really doesn't. They can't tell when it's time to stop talking or time to please say something. They just can't see it. They're out of rhythm all the time. I hope I'm not about to say something for too long. But when you can see it, there's an explosion of joy when you realize, oh, God was busy all the while. I want to encourage you. God is busy. I know it looks like the ingredient now, but it won't be long. It'll be the final product. Secondly, you change your mindset from curse to blessing, not only when you can see it, but when you get it. I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation with someone, and no matter how many words you use, they don't get it. It's all about being teachable and receptive. Lord, I'm ready to receive from you. Jesus said to Simon Peter and Matthew, when he asked him about who he thought he was. And Simon Peter said, you're Christ, the son of the living God. In verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father 
who is in heaven. And I also uh, say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Do you know what Peter did in that moment? He picked something up. He knew in his heart that Jesus was no ordinary man. Jesus was the Son of God. Do you know when you get it, that Jesus is the Son of God living in your heart? It changes your attitude. How can I be cursed if the one who is the author of all blessings lives in me? Who are you cursing? If you cursed it at me, it would fall off because he is in me. Doesn't the Bible say, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? It's just not possible for my life to be held down by somebody else's intentions when Jesus is on the inside of me. Ah, Peter, you get it. God became flesh and dwelt among us. That's the power of the gospel. And then there's one more thing that'll change your attitude from this cursings to blessings mindset. And that is not only if you see it, get it, but share it. Don't be selfish during the process of the making of a miracle life. I used to think that if I give things away, I'll have less. But I've learned if you give things away, you make room for more. That's a hugely different attitude. I've learned over the years to role model that even in practical things. If I buy new items of clothing, something's got to go from my cupboard. My friends now know they hover like tsetse flies. They do, they really do. They know he bought some items, so something's got to go. Have an attitude in your heart that I've got to always have space in my cupboard for something new. Giving things away, being a blessing, not just wanting to receive a blessing, is simply you saying, Lord, I've made space in the pantry for you to do new things. Sometimes people just won't. Won't try out new things, won't step into new seasons, won't go to a small group, won't get involved in serving in something, holding on tightly to a constructed life because you think it might just, just be perfect when, when you start giving it away, give your life away, you start making space for God to do new things. Look at a definition of a really spiritual person. Brethren, it's a heavy word, but the sisters are included. If a man is overtaken in any trespass, in other words, if you have a friend who's committed some sin, you who are spiritual, you should restore such one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourselves, lest you are also tempted. A truly spiritual person, a truly blessed person, knows how to be a blessing. It's easy to point a finger at somebody during their weakness and highlight it. It takes a real man of God or a woman of God to hide somebody while they're in recovery and to give them time to heal even from their own bad mistakes and to carry them to the cross and to take them into the room so Jesus can heal them. That takes a spiritual person. When you start thinking like that, you realize, I don't need to worry about whether I'm blessed or cursed. I can be a blessing. Isn't that a powerful thing? I'm not even worried about whether I'm blessed or cursed. All I want to know is, Lord, can I please be a blessing? I want to encourage you tonight that you can't be cursed. Everything is in the construction, the wrestling toward becoming a blessing. And if you really want to speed it up, learn to be a blessing. Can you say amen to that? Would you stand with me as we pray? Now, uh, sometimes, uh, where's Brett? Uh, is, oh, Vince, are you, are you on? on are you on? Because I, I know he, he was here a moment ago, and oh, he's got a gift. I mean, so do you, but, but, I mean, he's a piano teacher. I mean, next level. Am I, am I right? Am I, he's not going to talk to me now. I'll have to be a blessing to him. Hey, Vince, I made two pancakes for you. I do want to take a moment to pray 
My prayer will be for, especially for you, if you feel like you've wondered, why is there a fight all the time? Why am I wrestling all the time? Maybe tonight a revelation that wrestling is blessing in the making. Can you say amen to that? Oh, I get it, Lord. I see it, Lord. I'm going to be a blessing in the meantime, Lord. And maybe to just keep walking, the little turn it around. What was intended for my harm, he turned it around and made it a blessing. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much that you are our blessing maker. You turn things intended to harm us, and you make them to our advantage. Your word says that you make all things work together for the good to them that love you and are called according to your word, according to your purpose. Lord, thank you that our attitude needs to change. We're not cursed. We're just wrestling while blessing is in the making. Teach us to hold a strong line, a persevering attitude, and wait, because in due season, we'll reap a reward. Thank you, Father, that we can have confidence that you'll turn every ingredient into something incredible. Blessed are we, highly favoured are we, as we follow after you. Tonight, Lord, I pray that every heavy attitude, every dark cloud, every internal struggle, every wrestling match will be lighter tonight with the realization, my blessing's coming. He's turning it around. And I'll even say to my fight, don't leave me until you've blessed me. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Would you give God a shout of praise and thanksgiving and worship? Uh, Now, don't rush off. It's a warm night. There's starting point. There's coffee shop. There's communion, prayer requests, personal prayer up front. It's family time. Hang out. God bless you.